Kayak made it in one piece. This is exciting. We have some ice, but I feel like it's more slush than it is actual ice. Yep. We're gonna take the kayak. We're gonna paddle our way through this little channel, go into the big lake. And today we are going far. We're gonna go to the other end of the lake, which is quite a trek. I think it's like, a mile and a half, to maybe two miles long. I haven't measured it, but it's a, it's a feat. So I'm gonna load up the kayak and then take the truck, go park it at the parking lot. First things first, life jacket. Once you get this settled, then you can move on to actually loading up the kayak. Oops, that's wrong. Ooh, that's a nasty spider ball right there. So, I believe we have to twist our paddle together. Okay, we got it. So we just twist this to lock and then we have, I need to figure out. So if we're paddling like this and they have to be like this, they have to be, I think parallel, right? I don't know what I'm doing guys. You guys can make fun of me. This is my first time. So lock, so if I have my paddles like this, I can push. I think that's right. Oh, dang it. I should have left my rod sleeve at the truck. Oh well. We got our net this time. And I believe when it comes to the chair, we just slide these two bars right here into these little slots. So just like that, I think. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing, so this could be a total error. Huge error on my part. Okay, there goes the two rod holders and I think I will just put the smaller rod up front. Grab the camera, grab the paddle and we're off. The mission is to not get this camera wet. So I was gonna bring my uh, leg waders that goes up to your thigh, but I couldn't find it. So we just won't care about it. All right, put this up front. Ooh, it's really shallow. I think we are definitely already hitting bottom. Yeah, it is super shallow. I think 
we should be all right. Okay, so first impressions, not the most stable, but I think we will be all right. So far, so good. It's super shallow, so I need to get out of here as fast as I can. I'm just craving a lot of slush. Oh man, this is fun. I think I'm gonna have a lot of cool adventures with this kayak right here. It's a lot better to paddle like this than my inflatable. This right here is the main body of the lake. So we just had to go through this little channel. And I hope that going through all that little slush is nothing that this kayak can't handle. Oh, ate this thing. Okay. Come on, almost out there. to the water. Sweet. Let's get comfortable. So it seems like other than that part that we just came through, the lake is thawed out, which I have open water. So let's do this. So far, I really like this kayak. I don't know much about kayaks, but it seems like it paddles nice. I'm hardly using any strength to paddle and the, the kayak's moving, so big improvement over my little inflatable raft. It can be a little bit more balanced, but you know, for a kayak that's relatively cheap, I don't think we have much to complain about. And yeah, next time, waders or rain pants are a must. We made it out to deeper water. We were paddling over a shallow flat for probably about a couple hundred yards. And right now I cannot see the bottom anymore. So it tells me we're in deeper water. And this right here is a deeper pool with the rocks on the bottom. So I'm not where I want to be yet. However, I figured we can take it easy and go slow. I do like the fact that we have a wind blowing from our back, so it's helping me push me in the direction I'm going. I hope that later tonight, the wind switches when I come back and it blows from my back as well. So we'll toss this little Panther Martin around. We'll see if we can't get lucky before we even get to our destination. Always check the drag. It's a little tight. We'll just fish for a little bit, see if we can't break the skunk on the kayak. All right, this thing is shifting. So there's a lot of things that I need to do for this kayak. One, I'm gonna eventually buy a trolling motor and a trolling motor mount so that I don't have to paddle. So that if I wanted to troll, I can troll. And the other thing is I need to make uh, camera mounts for my GoPro so that I can have a secondary camera position right there. We'll just work with what we got and then go on from there. I am going to just cast this rod behind me and I'm going to paddle and leave this out. What a terrible cast. I should throw on like a half ounce spinner, but I'll leave it there. Toss this into this rod holder and we'll just paddle. Oh, 
I was originally gonna go and land over there, but that side looks a little too steep. I mean, not too steep, but just a little steeper than I like. This side right here looks a little bit more welcoming so that I can actually land my kayak as well. Looks like there are some people that have fished here before. You see those stick rod holders? So we can see it's a nice little shallow flat and then it just drops off, which that's exactly what I want. Woo, we made it. All right. This is when having waders would be handy because you could just step in this water right here, but I don't have them because I don't know where I put them. Okay, well, I like this spot except for that littered water bottle. Ah. We'll pick that stuff up when we leave. Woo, we've made it. This thing is still swimming out there. I've never fished here, so I don't know what to expect at all. And I want to maximize my time fishing, so I'm gonna quickly just throw on some power bait. So all I've got on here is a Carolina rig, so I just have a egg sinker weight that slides up and down my line. I have eight pound mono as my main line tied to a swivel. And then I have about a three foot leader here tied to a size 14 treble hook. And I'm just gonna throw on some power bait really quick. I just wanna get some bait in the water. All right, quickly cast this thing out. Fish are jumping out there. There's two uh, ripples out there. Fish just surfaced out there, which I think that's a good sign. There's fish here. So I don't know anything about the contours of this part of the lake right here. So I did two random casts, one far, one somewhat close. We'll give it maybe half an hour for these two casts. If no action, then we'll reel it in and then work different parts of this part right here, just to try to see if we can't hone in on a school of fish. I did see two fish surface over there, so I do know that there's some fish in here. I just don't know if there's a specific spot that these trout like to hang out around. But that's fishing. So waiting game begins. I have rainbow color power bay on this rod, sure bay on that rod. And then if the action is just too slow, I'll go to my spinner and just go cast around. And then I also do have Ned rigs. I am going to put on my puffies because this pant leg right here is drenched and my upper body is cold. Got some potatoes and onion. Hopefully we catch a fish. Then I also brought my crankbaits, lipless, and a jerk bait because trout love that stuff. Whew, this wind is chilly.
got some mallards saying goodbye. This spot, I am just not feeling it, so we're gonna move. Just gotta trust your gut instinct. Gut instinct right now says the spot is no good. Oh, I have a, uh, hold my, hold my thought. I have a fish on. I thought I heard a bell earlier, but. <laughs> okay, scratch everything I just said. I just packed up, everything's in my kayak. And I came to pick up my rod and I have a fish on there. What in the world? I have somebody else's line. I don't know if this was accidental or this fish did come by and take the power bait and then somehow got the line tangled. But I'm glad I caught him because that's miserable to have the hook in its mouth like that and just swimming around. There's a swivel right there. There's a line going to the fish's mouth. You can see the hook right there. We caught a fish. I don't know if you consider this a catch, but we caught one, so I'm gonna bonk them. When their eye just kind of stares off into space, like not really focusing on anything, you know that they're out. I am so torn right now as to what I need to do. The fact that we caught a fish tells me that there's fish here. So maybe we'll give it another half hour to hour and we'll go back to casting where I just caught this fish from. I'm pretty sure that fish came and bit my power bait. And in the process of just being around my power bait, it got tangled. The line in that fish's mouth got tangled with my line and I caught my fish. So I have everything loaded up in the kayak. But okay. Maybe it's a sign for us to stay, which I will give it another try. Okay. We shall do that. Maybe the fish are over here. I have a fish on here too. What? What is happening? Guys. I am so confused. What is happening? Okay, that fish is not an accidental catch. There's fish in here. <laughs> oh, this is a good one too. Okay, we are definitely not moving. What? Oh, that's a good eater. Oh. What is happening? Oh yeah, just absolutely choked that one. Look how beautiful that trout is. I'm so speechless right now. I have all my stuff loaded up to leave. Okay then, I'm not complaining. This thing, uh, this one swallowed it, so I gotta do some stuff, but I'm gonna go back and throw that one out. I'm gonna put this guy out of his misery. That's so weird because I did not even hear any bell. No bells have gone off at all, as far as I can tell. Maybe I shouldn't be relying on the bell and just pay attention instead. Kinda cast it right there. They were not far off the shore at all. So, I'm like happy and confused at the same time. Ooh. Ouch. I don't think they're color picky today because I caught one off of sherbet and one off of rainbow. Which I like it when they're not being picky. 
Oh yeah. Oh, fish on. Okay, we are not leaving for sure. Let me get this bell off. I didn't even get that other rod out yet. Oh, this is what we've been looking for. Man, I really love this Mag's custom rod. It just feels so good when the fish are fighting. Like, I don't feel like I'm giving the fish much advantage, but it's still nimble enough to let the fish do its thing. Okay, don't go in there. There's a, there's a big drop right here, so I need them to go up and over the drop. Dude, these are good fish. Like, not too big, just perfect eaters. They're getting bigger. Look at that red band right there. <laughs> oh, are we having fun yet? That's a solid fish. It's probably like a two pounder right there. Oh, look at that hen. Bro. <laughs> oh. Probably full of fake eggs in here. These stock trout, they undergo a fake spawn and we're approaching that time with these uh, fish go into a fake spawn. They don't actually spawn spawn because these are just stock trout. Biggest trout of the year right there. Beautiful. Didn't let that one swallow because it actually alerted the bell that time. We might be out of here way faster than I thought. We have a limit of five fish a day and I've already caught three. I think it's safe to say these fish do not care what color I'm throwing at them. Or maybe I'm just getting really lucky that they want sherbet and rainbow. I don't like using power bait when my hands are wet because it's hard to form the ball. Okay, I think we found the spot though. They're not too far out. They're about 15 yards out. I caught the second one right here in front of me, but the two first and third one have been right in front of this deep cliff right here. And so perhaps there's a transition zone right there, or maybe there's some type of underwater structure that I can't see that they're liking. Or maybe I'm just in the right uh, path that they like to swim back and forth. Right back out. Yeah, I really like this rod. So again, this is a Mag's Custom Rods. They sent it out to me and this is a seven foot two medium light power fast action rod. I purposely built this rod like this because I wanted a good not only trout rod, but good do it all rod. But primarily when I built this rod, I had trout in mind and fighting these fish. I think this build is perfect for how I like to fish. All right, where did I throw the bell? Did I throw the bell somewhere? I know there's a bell right here. Okay. Let's go back over here. I'm gonna put my two rods next to each other now because it'll be easier for me to maintain. I'm already getting bit. Oh my goodness. Oh, there, I think I have a fish on. Yep, that's a fish on. Guys and gals. We have found the mecca. I just put this rod down. Fish number four. At this point, I can't even rig on my second one because I don't want to go over limit. And I don't think we need to. <laughs> oh, this is too epic. Lift my rod up high so that I force the fish to swim and fight up high so that my line doesn't rub on this ledge right here. Yep, just another solid fish. Good eater. Boom. Who needs a net? Yeah, I let him play with it for too long. He swallowed this one. Ow, sharp teeth. Okay, bonk him. Fish number four. He's still squirming, but he's out. Fish number four, he swallowed this one, but I'm not gonna care because I'm gonna leave this rod on the side. And I'm gonna try to see if I can't catch fish number five. 
I only need one more for my limit, so I don't want to get caught with two fish on the rods and have fish number five and six, which that's not good. So didn't even have time to rig up my second rod, fish on. Gotta love days like these. Just randomly picked a spot when I was rowing in because I just like the fact that this had a little flat shore for me to set up shop. Same spot. There's gotta be a school just stacked there. It just makes sense. Okay, let's try to wash my hands as fast as I can. That's a fish. Fish on. Oh, he came off. He came off, dang it. <laughs> it's okay. Did I lose my rig or did the fish just pop off? Okay, the fish just popped off. <laughs> I'm loving this. gonna sit here and watch my rod took the bell off for the next five minutes with the rate that these fish are biting should only be a matter of minutes here maybe seconds I'm just gonna sit here and really focus on catching my fifth one so that I don't have to worry about fishing anymore and then we can start cooking because I am starving and of course when I sit here and watch the rod they're not biting. All right, put the bell back on because I need to take the other hook out of the fish's mouth. I've been trying to do that, but I haven't had the chance to. That's a fish. That's a fish. My bell's in the water, but I got the fish. Fish number five. I'll pick up that bell momentarily. I knew it was only a matter of minutes. Good fighter. Good fighter. I don't think it's as big as it originally feels. No, get out of the ledge. Yep, come up over. Perfect. Oh, look at that beautiful fish. Trout fishing is so fun. Appreciate you, buddy. All right, get up here. This is a good one. Nice size. Just the chrome of these fish. Never gets old. Fish number five. Let him take that one, it's gone. Let's put him out. So what I have been doing with all the fish that have swallowed my hook so far is I bonk them so that they're dead and they don't feel any pain anymore, they're not suffering anymore. And then from there, since the fish is no longer alive, I just took a stick here 
wrapped my line around it a bunch of times and then I just simply pulled the line out and then I have my hook obviously if you're using this technique every time you pull it out you want to double check your line to make sure that there's no weak spot on the line and so that if you cast it out again and you get another fish you set the hook the fish doesn't break off so that's one technique you just yank it out once the fish is dead and no longer suffering so fish number five these are beautiful eaters these are all about the size that I would want to catch and keep if I was to eat. Anything bigger than this one right here, number three, they're just on the not so good side. Their meat's just a lot more muddy tasting in my opinion, but all these ones right around the 12 to 15 inch mark, 16 inch maybe, like you can see how chrome they are. And these are usually the ones that have the bright red meat. The older they get, the bigger they get they tend to have more red meat and that red meat just tastes more muddy and just not as fresh and clean as these guys so i'm happy with my five fish limit we're gonna cook one up and back on the kayak we go what a day Potatoes, oil, black pepper, and garlic salt. We're gonna cook this first because this takes forever to cook. When you leave your burner open in the wind like this, it will take a substantially longer amount of time for your food to cook. But as soon as you block the wind, something as simple as this, it speeds up the cooking process that much faster. Doing the same thing we did last time, black pepper and pink salt, just because I have the leftover pink salt in this bag, so I'm trying to get rid of it. Again, same thing, fillet the fish, left the skin on, and we're just gonna over season the meat side. I had a feeling that the sun was gonna come out. Happy it is. Fishing's done. We're about to finish up on some cooking here. And then just get to enjoy and relax. You just gotta be grateful for days like these, man. Like my last outing last week, I was struggling to catch one fish. And then you have days like this where it's just one fish after another once you found out where the school is. Broke into two. Wow, that smells so good. Took forever just to get the water to get to that point. And they didn't even boil. So we'll just slowly simmer this.
warm those back up while I let my pasta chill. I've never ate instant pasta before, so this will be interesting. Well, there's my lunch. Nothing too fancy, but we got our trout in pink salt and black pepper just cooked over oil. We got some jalapenos, some onion. We got some potatoes cooked in foil with garlic salt, black pepper, and some oil. And then we've got instant chicken pasta. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day to come out here to enjoy creation. Today has been just an amazing day. Right now the sun's coming out and it just amplifies the beauty of your creation. I also thank you for all the hands that help provide this food in front of me right now. And most importantly, thank you for your son Jesus Christ who bore my sins on that cross and died on that cross and rose three days later to conquer death. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am so excited. Man, you just, you just gotta be grateful for this stuff when it all comes together. I'm not gonna lie, this stuff looks bomb too. Never tried that before, but always gotta give the trout the first love. Just look how orange that meat is. Potatoes. Mm hmm. Just look how beautiful it is right now. Sun's out, it's warm. I can feel my fingers again. We got a kayak, we're just kind of in the middle of nowhere in a way. It's just a plate full of food. You just gotta be grateful for this stuff, man. So while I eat this, I do want to just remind you guys, if you guys watched the previous video, right now, until the end of February 2024, I have a hunt giveaway, a turkey hunt giveaway in collaboration with the Crazy Elk Company. First link in the description of this video will take you to the entry page. The Crazy Elk Company and I have come together to give a turkey hunt giveaway with me. And you can buy a shirt for $40 and we are raising funds for the Sportsman's Alliance, which is an organization that fights for our hunting and fishing rights. So if you appreciate anything that I do on this channel, hunting and fishing, this is an organization that you should all go support because without hunting and fishing, you have no videos on this channel to watch. So I encourage everybody who enjoys hunting and enjoys fishing to go and support the Sportsman's Alliance, whether that be through our giveaway where you purchase a shirt or directly supporting the Sportsman's Alliance by becoming a member. That giveaway is live right now and who knows, you might be a lucky winner and I'll see you this spring on a turkey hunt. Those potatoes and trout are good, but I'm just gonna eat this pasta straight out of the pan. Never had instant pasta before. Mmm. Okay. It's a little chilled down now, but that flavor is good. I dig it. This might be the heftiest lunch I've ever done for a catching cook. But I think I'm gonna demolish it all. This food stands no chance. The best part about these trout is when you fry them like this, even though I didn't take out any of the bones, like it kind of just dissolves and you don't even notice it. like that another trip in the books
what a beautiful day it has turned into. You're getting used to it. At first, when I first started paddling, I was like, man, my arm is going to be dead. But you really just got to warm up your arms. Once you warm up your arms, you're just ready to go. back I don't know which way I came in through I didn't even realize there was two potential routes you could come in from we're just gonna go see the biggest one though I'm pretty sure it's this one over here because I remember eating that twig to my face Look how shallow this is. This is like a foot of water. And it's like this for quite a bit of ways. So my only complaint about this kayak is it doesn't have a drain plug so like i've had this water ever since i got it and there's just no way to get it out because this blocks the water and it can go underneath those black things so i'll just have to wait for warm weather to dry it out and i also need a dolly so i can roll it around and transport it when i don't have access to the launch like this right away This video goes live on Wednesday and I will be at the Hunt Expo in Salt Lake City, Utah all day Thursday and I fly out Friday morning. So I'll be at the Hunt Expo all of Thursday. So if you're watching this on Wednesday, the day before the Salt Lake City Hunt Expo begins and you're going to be at the Hunt Expo, we might run into each other. I would probably just be walking all over the place saying hi to my friends over at Vortex and Kestrel Glassing Systems and whatnot. But till then, I'm off to Utah. It was a good last minute bonsai trip.